Joining us tonight is an old dear friend of mine, someone who I could not have been happier to see succeed in pro wrestling than this guy. I, I love him. He's like my brother. I haven't seen him in ages. I'm sure he'll bury me every chance he can tonight. My old tag team partner, Matt Stryker. Welcome, my man. Oh, man. Thank you so much. I already know my face is going to hurt from smiling. Uh, when you asked me to do this, I, you know, you teased me like, oh, I know you're going to say no. Nah, for you, man, you're a, uh, you're a vital part of my career. I don't think I'd be anywhere without our experiences. So uh, it's going to be nice to catch up. Awesome. I can't wait. You look great. I mean, Thank look at that face. <laughs> you're, you're great. <laughs> it's been punched a lot. <laughs> but there you go. Let's get into it. So I remember you from the Indies. We were a tag team. We had a lot of fun. You're doing the, the indie grind. You're going from place to place, you know, trying to get your name out there. And tell me about the issue with uh, being a teacher, taking time off, and how all that happened. So at the time, I'm wrestling, but at my dad's encouragement, I also am teaching. He's like, look, what are the chances that this is going to work? Everyone in my family in my life said, don't do it. You know, you're too small or no, no, no. My dad was the only one that said, all right, try it, but be smart, have a backup. And the backup was teaching. So I was teaching and you know, it's great that we're here now because you're one of the first people that I ever met when we were wrestling. I was 25. It was making six figures. I don't want to blow up your spot in his real life job. And you gave me this sobering look into reality that you can do this, kid, but I'm making six figures right now. I didn't understand what that was. Being 25 years old, I didn't know any of my peers that were doing that. You were the first peer that was doing that. Now that I look back on it, the teaching was great. And the fact that I still have the degree is even better because I can always eat, thank God. But teaching and wrestling, it was just a great time in my life. And it was, uh, I was really fortunate to be able to balance both those things. Tell me about you using sick days in school. And the <laughs> uh, I don't really teaching. remember all that. No. Um, <laughs> that was the, uh, the big to do. And it's, it's one of those things. If I would have called, so you have personal days in your job and you have sick days. And if I would have called in personal, I don't know if you and I would be sitting here. The fact that the universe worked in the way that it did and uh, the sick days were there. And it's interesting because I never tried to quote unquote get over. I mean, I recall an interview saying, hey, listen, I will pay back whatever it was that I was erroneously given and let me just have my job back. That was my concern. Oh my gosh, my job. I had no idea the next time the phone rang, it was gonna be WWE. I, you have no idea. So to stay humble in that moment, I'm glad looking back that I wasn't arrogant or pompous. Oh, duh, duh. No, I was, I was you know, contrite and remorseful and oh my gosh, I had fear. And I think that that's something that I, I'm glad that I showed that and had that. And I wasn't all, you know, boom, 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 boom. That'll come later. <laughs> Ex explain what happened though. You were, you were using your personal days or six yeah. days to take wrestling bookings, correct? Well, <laughs> I took technically uh, two sick days and I was not sick on those days. I was either in transit to Japan or uh, I think on one, I was traveling to Philadelphia to do a SmackDown. And that was deemed theft of service. And if you want to get into semantics, and I'm not a lawyer, sure, the argument can be made. Absolutely. But to take it to the point where you want to uh, end someone's livelihood, again, I said I was remorseful. I was contrite. I, I, I knew I had done something wrong. There has to be room for that, especially in, in teaching and education. We want kids to know, hey, we make mistakes, but there's a path beyond that. Don't think that one mistake is going to shut the door. But that's what happened, and it just ended up, I'm a big believer in, in God and faith, it just ended up that my name was on the front page of every newspaper for a week when nothing else was going on, and it landed on Vince McMahon's desk, and they called me up, and off to the races we go. Who called you up? The first call comes from Court Bauer, with whom I am working currently at this time, what am I, 24 years later, or whatever it is, that from when I started. So uh, he was the first call because he and I knew each other in the infancy of his promotion, MLW, which has grown and evolved now all these years later. And that's great to see. And then the next call came from Tommy Dreamer, uh, whom I had wrestled, I think, two weeks prior. And uh, I guess I made enough of an impression to say, hey, listen, come on down and let's see what you can do. <laughs> and they put you in there with Kurt Angle. Yeah, that's the, hey, let's see what you can do. And the lesser known fact is that I had 
had an opportunity earlier with WWE. So if this had happened in July, this conference that we're having, I had had an opportunity in February with them and I had wrestled Kurt Angle actually in Philadelphia at the time. So they kind of knew me and they knew at least that I wasn't going to trip over myself <laughs> to a point that would embarrass them. So they had me with Kurt Angle, but this is a different entity. It's live. It's raw. It's New Jersey. You're the New York kid. You're on every newspaper, damn it. You're going to actually get a microphone and get to speak. So they put me in with an Olympic gold medalist and, uh, you want to talk about a test? <laughs> yeah. I worked Kurt. Actually, I was, I was Kurt's one of his first WWF dark matches. Nice. And uh, he was as humble as pie and said, could you please call the whole match? Wow. So I, yeah. Yeah. And we uh, went out there, had a damn good match at uh, Meadowlands imagine. Arena. That was my arena going uh, when I went yep. to as a child. So I was a big yep. throw of mine. The Brendan Byrne. <laughs> so, so there you are, Kurt Angle, like, do they, do they offer you a job right after? What does Kurt say? How does this work? Yeah. So, uh, you know, long story short, for those that don't know, and, I, and I, it's silly of me to assume. It's funny. Someone once said to Joe DiMaggio, and I'm no way comparing myself to Joe DiMaggio, they said, why do you hustle so hard all the time? You're Joe DiMaggio. It's May. Take a break. And he turned to the guy and he said, there's someone out there that's never seen me play before. How can I possibly not? So there's that. Um, so not assuming anyone knows the story, I, I had, they had this thing called Kurt Angle's Olympic Invitational, where a no name would come in and try to wrestle Kurt Angle for three minutes. He's an Olympic gold medalist legitimately. I was only supposed to go down to maybe like the last minute or so, but again, I go back to God in faith. For whatever reason, Kurt kind of took a tumble out to the floor, and when we looked up, there was about 15 seconds left, and this building was going bananas, and that's the beauty of pro wrestling. Everyone knows it's predetermined, but there are those moments, few and far between, Mike, and you know this, bro, where the unscripted happens, that special moment where everyone in the building knows they're seeing something special. That's what that was. It got down to one second left on the clock, and Kurt had me in a submission hold, and I tapped out, and everyone was like, oh my gosh! I come through the back, Kurt hugs me, I'm going to go talk to Johnny, who's Johnny Laurinaitis. I stand around for the entire show. I mean, come 11.05, everyone's leaving, I'm standing there in my nice clothes with my bag, hoping someone sees me. And Johnny Laurinaitis says, oh, you're going to be in Worcester tomorrow? Worcester, Massachusetts. I said, y yes, okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And that day he pulled me in, asked me all kinds of questions, and before I could answer, he said, I'm going to offer you a job. And that was it. Was it? your standard $150 10 shot contract is that what, no sir this, no, no. All right. so and, and it's great that you asked that question because you're a dad and you're also a friend and when I was coming up you were like a big brother to me so you're gonna ask the question it's the same question my father asked rest his soul what are they paying you butch <laughs> and it was actually a, a pretty good deal um, it was six figures to start, and um, I, I read it. And it's funny, John Lauren, I just said to me afterwards, because I didn't give it right back to him. I said, can I take it home? Can I read it? Can I have a lawyer read it? He says, I knew you were smart. I actually read the thing, and there's so much room for so much more. The downside in a contract can be you know, six figures, low six figures, but if you're doing every live event and every pay-per-view and every blah, 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 next thing you know, you're in the mid six figures instead of a, a number that starts with one. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. And I was able to figure out how to make money and not lose money there. That was a big thing for me over the near decade I was there. Now, let me ask you this. So they, they bring you back. You work at Kurt Angle again. And talk to me about the second match. So I am already signed by the yeah. second match. Okay. So it's a little different. Uh, but it's again, a week later, I'm, right? What? It's one week later. Yeah, I think it's one week week later. I, I, maybe it's Cleveland, but I know the buzz was that I was supposed to win his medals, which was great. Oh my gosh, here's this kid, and uh, in my crazy head, Kurt and I did a spot where I had him in a in a rear naked choke. And in my head, I must have been squeezing just a little too hard because uh, he came up in the next spot. He kicked me square between the eyes for real, and you know it. And anyone out there that's ever been jarred in any way you see three people <laughs> you know it's the old rocky thing hit the one in the middle i saw three kurt angles and that wasn't good and you can go back and watch the match my legs are jelly and i kind of think that maybe because i was a little too tense there the angle went to eugene 
uh, Nick Dinsmore. And actually, in hindsight, it's much better to have Eugene win the gold medals than me. But uh, yeah, there was that. And then you work, Kurt, on all these like live events, non-televised stuff. After six weeks of wrestling an Olympic gold medalist, you're pretty good. <laughs> or at least you think you are. 